goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Um, Nick Cannon had his seventh baby with a new baby mama. Um, and it got me to thinking about like family dynamics and family structures in 2021, um, as opposed to family structures that were more socially accepted in, in old times. Um, so I had some questions that I want to just pose to the group, kind of build on. And uh, the first one is, is it possible to be a great parent with so many kids not living with you full time? Like I can see if you got like, you know, maybe the majority of them, but you got one or two here, but like he got seven, they all in different houses. Like how are you ever giving um, all of them what they need? Now speaking as a parent who has one child who's not living with him, um, it's a struggle on the emotional level for me. And I know it probably is for her. Um, as far as doing a parenting thing, I'm there as much as I can be, or I can I say allowed to be because of distance. So some things I have no input on, or like some day to day things, the major issues I, I, I do have a lot of input on. Um, health wise, I'm always monitoring the health still. That's, that's like a daily thing because my daughter is diabetic. So I'm always monitoring that. But as far as I would say the level of parenting that I'm able to do with my children that I live, that live in the home with me, it is different and it can be seen even from my outside perspective looking in. So as the actual father who has to deal with this situation, you feel me like it ain't a negative situation, but I know co-parenting versus parenting, parenting. It's a big difference. Now, my lifestyle has changed, of course, due to my parenting, my parenting issues, not even issues, but the way I have to parent being distant and being here. So of course there's a difference on how I discipline and whatever, whatever, you feel me? Um, and you can tell that when my daughter does come down and she does live with me for the time that she does live with me, it's some it's, it has to be an adjustment there. Um, but as far as someone who has more kids and all of them live somewhere else, it's all about, and that is it has to be that by that person's lifestyle and that person's income because you would still have to be able to spend that time because it's not all money that matters. That's where I'm time, that's what I was time matters. You feel like um I try to do everything I can, everything my daughter wants, but like every parent knows you're not gonna be able to meet all those wants, but you can meet all the needs. Um I think I'm there, but of course every parent who is a distant parent wants to be there more. Um I'm always at a drop of a dime if need be. So it's never been a time my daughter's called me and I can't get to her if, if she needs me there. I've always been that. But as far as me just being at different performances and stuff like that, I feel like I could, I wanted to be there more. But if there any circumstances, it is what it is in the past. But as she gets older, we form a different bond, even from even from a distance. You remember? So she tries to involve me more. She calls me on her home when we video time, we FaceTime, but that's still not the same to me and in person time so as a person who grew up with one parent and longing to know another parent i feel like she still may grow up with some of the same feelings i had because a parent is not there but on the other instance she won't because i i am here you feel me like i am here to a certain distance but i still long to want to be there more i can't really speak on her side i can only speak on mine and what i think she feels um, but in the Nick Cannon situation, I don't know me personally how that would work because you have a multitude of children in different parts of the country. Um, now, depending on his relationship with his his the other other parents, his co-parent, that may be a feasible situation. I don't know if he all of them, all the baby mamas got a relationship and they all agree, okay, we all he gonna get the key all the kids this time or whatever, whatever. Or what? But if you got seven kids, it's only seven days in a week. You can't, unless you're flying every day, you feel me? Where are you? How you going to do it? Now, you got a certain amount that live with you, and you just going to see the other t other ones on the weekend, something like that. Okay, I can understand that. But with a 
them all the through the kids. Like if your pockets ain't like that, it ain't gonna work. You feel me? It's like somebody gonna grow up feeling like they're feeling not wanted. Somebody gonna grow up with some type of daddy issue. Just being on, okay, my brother, my sister see you all the time. Why well, I can't see the same amount of time they can't. You feel me? Right. Even though none of none of us live with you, why can't we all? So it's always gonna be something like that. You feel me? So I mean, it's difficult all around, but it's always gonna be hard on the kids, and that that's the main thing. And I don't think a lot of people focus on that that right there. It may be difficult for the parent to move around, whatever, but it was the parent's decision to lay down, not the kids. So just look at how the kids be affected. Uh, me personally, like, these days, if you can't afford to have a multitude of kids, you need to start wrapping it up. Just wrap it up anyway, same sex. But if you plan on having kids, if you know your finances ain't right, don't have a multitude of kids because at the end of the day, your struggles will just become the kids' struggles. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hell yeah, they will. Um, I was actually about to ask that. Um, but what did you have on that, Pat, before I ask my next question? Um, I mean, I feel like both of y'all hit it right on the die. I can't really say too much because I don't have it. But at, at the same time, it's kind of obvious that if they're like in different separate places, that's going to put a hindrance on. Like, I feel like being a great parent depends on the the end result of the child at the end of the day, like, or, or whatever, and how that child feels about the parent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, and just how often they've been around the child to influence how great they are as a person, the child that is. So That's real. I, I, would, I would say it would be about that pretty much. Yeah. I, I let me say, I mean, let me say this okay. real quick. Let me say yeah. this real quick. <laughs> Two parents out there who have kids in different locations. It ain't about, once again, it ain't about the 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 material possessions you provide for them. It's about their time. Because at the end of the day, in a kid's mind, if you're spending more time with another child than them, they feel like it's something in them that's causing that. You got to realize it's all about time. Time spent. All time spent. Well, I ain't going to say all because don't be abusive in your time. All good time spent right. is good for the kid. You feel me? Like, Spend that time with them, man. Like, I understand you got to work and you got to go pay bills. Spending time with your kids means so much to them. You feel me? Like, so, so much. So, little things like that, man. Just little things like watch it and watch a movie. Spend time with your kids. You got a multitude of kids, get them together. The games. I don't know what Nick Cannon is doing. Yeah. You can go ahead, Jay. My bad. No, you're good. There. You're good. Go ahead and spit on it. Because, I mean, you, you know, I only have one child, so. There's our dynamics that I'm not even familiar with. So I go ahead and preach your wisdom. Um, I was going to also ask, like, so, like, when you got a dynamic like that, where, like, so Nick got, he got twins with Mariah. That's there. Then you got, I think, this is a new set of twins he just had with this new lady. And then he got, like, another baby over here with this lady. And then another baby over here with, I think, maybe Christina Milian or somebody. I don't know who it was, some some model lady, and then he had another baby somewhere else, something like that. So he got baby, he got, a out, he got at least four different <clears throat> baby mother's cribs. When you got a dad, like even if you financially paying the bills right, and you go see your kids, does that dynamic affect how the kids will develop their ideas of love and relationships? Like, will they end up? having a bunch of different I mean, baby mothers if you have a boy. That's all That's all in the parents because um, regardless of what a parent's relationship is, at the end of the day, if the kid is educated enough and not just saying their mentality as far as their book smarts, I'm saying their parents talking to them mm-hmm. and actually let them know well, this is what's going on because sometimes the parents try not to talk about kids about adult situations. But sometimes you got to. You got to involve your children, especially when it comes to the two parents and how they're how they're moving. If they're together, if they're not together. Kids want to know why why dad not here, why mommy not here. You got to let them know that. But, and especially if you want to move on and bring somebody else around. Um, now, if you got a, a bitter either one of the any one any either parents bitter, of course the kids gonna grow up looking at something a little different. You feel me? Because they're gonna have a a, a jaded view 
of how this this dynamic would be. But if both parents are mature enough in a situation, you feel me, to move forward amicably, I believe I said that right. But if not, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I don't think a child will grow up like that. Um, my situation, per se, uh, right. I grew up with my mother. Uh, my mother my father was not together. And then when he when he did what he did, like I said before, he passed away doing whatever he did. Um, but they were not together at that time. Uh, I grew up not wanting to get married, but not being a person who was not involved in relationships. And I didn't have a jaded view of relationships. I'm married. In a successful marriage, I would say so myself. And my mother, you feel me, like that's not what her and my father had. So, I mean, your environment does have a part to play in how you view that dynamic. But once again, communication is the key in all things. So I feel like if parents are willing and strong enough to communicate with their children and move forward together in a in a good manner, then the, the kid won't have a negative view. But if negative is in the air and it's nothing but drama there, of course the kid's gonna grow up thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna be the same thing gonna happen with me, or this is gonna be this is gonna be the situation that's gonna repeat. You feel me? Like that's how cycles. That's how I see cycles happen. You feel me? Like especially when it's negative and it's breeding negativity around it, it just goes in cycles. But if you put a little positive in there and have some good, clear communication, it all works out. Real talk. Uh, Pat, did you have anything on that? Uh, I'm the, hey, I was trying to get my um my audio and stuff because it's breaking up over here. <laughs> okay, cool, man. Cool, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, also, before we move on, before we move on, let me say this. Now, we all know people who have a multitude of children. You feel me in different locations, but the I, I've seen the good and seen the bad. I've seen the maturity and growth in some of these people that we do we do know with multiple the kids. You feel me? So I can't say that growth uh, growth potential is there for people in those situations. But I just hope at the end of the day. Once again, I repeat it, that they put the priority of the children out there and not whatever feeling they have for or against their ex-partners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Don't use the kids like that. Um, with communication, you touched on that a few seconds ago, said communication was important. If communication is like all good, completely healthy. Everybody's on the same page. Co-parenting is amazing as far as communication goes. And the money is there. Does the family structure matter anymore if the communication and the finances are all great? Or does a nuclear family of a mother, a father, and then the kids under them in the house together all at once, is that still the ideal way to raise a family? Um, now, once again, speaking only from personal experience, I feel like when the communication is there and both people are willing to move forward peacefully, you feel me? Both people are willing or able to mature in their own lives where I have a wife and a family here. So when my daughter is here, it is a nuclear family here. When she goes to her mother's house with her mother and her husband, it's a nuclear family there. So I feel like she has two two sets of families. You feel me? Like, but both of them are clear, clear cut households in that classical sense. She just plays a role in two families versus just one now. Um, I feel like it's good for her because she has a certain level of balance and a certain level of freedom and a certain level of responsibility. You feel me? So I mean, she gets it from both ends. Where in a classical sense. You have that mother and father, you know, just this. And when you get on your own, then you experience other other stuff. Where in her in her case, she's always, she's constantly experiencing new stuff because it's different here than there, vice versa. You feel like rules right. is here may not be rules there. So in my daughter's case, she's the youngest at her mother's house, but she's the oldest at mine. So in one case, you're the baby, but the other one, you're the oldest. So in one case, right. you're a leader, in another one, you could be the baby. So I mean... It's, it's different experiences for her. So, I mean, it, to me and from what I see of her growth, it's building, it's helping her build a different set of skills and different mindset growing up 
and give her, and making her ready for different situations other people or other kids in her, in her shoes won't be. Right. And making her more responsible, you feel me? So I see there's something positive where some people, other people can say it may be negative or whatever their opinion may be, but at the end of the day, if you know face, you know I really don't give two, two shits about anybody's opinion anyway because it's just like assholes, everybody got one. Right. But at the end of the day, I've realized that the best thing for my daughter is for me to move peacefully and just do what, I, do what the best thing for her is, you feel me? And right. the best thing for her is I set clear-cut rules in my household and knowing that when she's here, her mother supports what rules are in my household, so she's not going to say nothing against what I'm saying and vice versa when she's with her mother, you feel me? So once again, communication, it all boils down to um, finances, that I mean, those, those come here and there for everybody. So, I mean, it is what it is. I ain't no millionaire and I ain't wealthy, so I got bills like everybody else do. But at the end of the day, I just make sure her needs are always taken care of. Wants, we got to grow up and learn. You got to wish in one hand and shit them up. So, right. that's a life lesson. I teach my kids early. <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is. But um, I just feel like if that dynamic is a positive dynamic, it can work. But it, it has to be two individuals that's willing to move forward. Um, in a lot of situations, you have one individual that's stuck in the mud. They don't want to move forward. And you may have a female who, I don't want no other woman around my kid. That's never going to be a positive situation because in one instance, you're telling this man you don't want him to move forward. Because right. if he's moving forward, he, another woman will eventually have to be around that child because he's either not going to be around the woman or not be around his child. Right. Don't don't make him have that choice. You're, you're making him have a bad choice. And same thing, if a man said the same thing, I don't know what to, don't know what to do to run my, shit, run my son. Now, if the dude is a good dude and he's willing to be there for your son and that way, why not? Because that's his more love for the child. And at the end of the day, we have to make sure his child is getting all the love they can. Just build a small village around him. If she's willing to move forward and he's willing to move forward, we created a, a village around his child that we're yeah. making sure every need and want because what faults this man may have, the other man may not have. What right, I can teach right, him, right, right, right. he may not be able to. And vice versa. I may not be able to teach you to do this, but he can. More power to you. Thank you for teaching. You got to get it. We got to get out of this mindset where we're thinking nobody else can teach my kid nothing. If you showing love to my kid and my kid know, oh shit, I know my, my daughter knows so you only got one daddy. You only got one mother. So that's not a that's not a, a a thing in my mind. You feel me? So that that egotistical shit is ain't no other man will be around my daughter. She got one daddy. She know that, but it can't be another man in her life. Why not have another positive male role model in her life? Right. With my shortcomings, right. is he may not have those. Shit, we may have the same shortcomings. I don't know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, why not let her be experienced and let her see more positive, not just the positive I can I can exude to her. I mean, that's how I view it in my own personal circumstance. But speaking right. on other people's circumstances, um, I see negative and I see positive. I, I see I see some kids that have grown up just because I, I used to be a teacher, so I've known kids from they were real young, and now they've grown, they got their own kids, and on their own family dynamic from having their mother and father come up to school arguing with each other while they're trying to have a parent meeting to seeing a kid grow up, have kids do the same thing with they meet. So I see the cycle, but then I also see some people break the cycle. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. To each his own, their own situation, but I just hope everybody does the right thing. Right. Um, I think in a situation where all of the households that the kids are in have nuclear situations where you have a, a female energy and a male energy that are leading the household, I love it. Um, but I do think there's a lot to be said about a child having a constant balance of male and female energies on a day-to-day -day basis that are guiding their principles and values as they're growing up. So that way they have that even kill. You don't want it to be skewed one way or the other and they have too much of one or the other energies because then they kind of, that's when they start being either too overly one thing or too overly another thing and either way it ends up being ugly for them in social situations so um 
I like a situation like what Faye said, where, you know, he got like a mother and a father in this house and a mother and a father in this house. And the kid basically is always surrounded by a mother and a father, no matter where they go. I like that, that vibe where you always have that energy because it, it gives a sense of consistency. And like I said, it keeps the child balanced. Like there's never a spot where they're going where it's all feminine energy or all masculine energy. It's always a yin and a yang. Um, but in general, um, I definitely think it only works if communication is absolutely healthy and if finances are great and both of them have to be there. Otherwise, I think that's where most of the issues come from with like, it's either we're not talking correctly so we don't understand each other so we're fussing all the time and the kids suffer or somebody's doing too much financially and they end up resenting the other person who's not doing as much and then it becomes a struggle over resource, financial resources. So I definitely think uh, both things have to be present, communication and the finances. Pat, you got anything? I would say communication is going to be key anyway because you, I would say, if you're not if you're not talking or having a plan or planning out anything or whatever, and y'all not on the same page, then it's always going to be the overthinking in the background making making problems, you know, where mm -hmm. it probably isn't a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying. Yep. So now I, I would say, if anything, like you can have you can have, you know, nuclear family is always the ideal or whatever, but you, you can still have a nuclear family like vibe and set up if the communication is right. Mm. So. I think I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, and I think that the family structure is an underrated part of what people think of when they think about like how they're setting up their futures as far as raising kids like I think planning that thing out beforehand like if you think it's a chance that you're going to be one of them people that may be a bit more promiscuous maybe planning for like okay what would this look like if I have two three baby mothers here or two three baby fathers here and the kids are not all with me how do I set this up what is the ideal family so that way you kind of at least have those conversations ready to go going into relationships with people as opposed to having to come up with that shit on the spot once you find out, oh, baby on the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 